नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते शिमला दीदी नमस्ते 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 सुनील जी नमस्ते गणेश जी सभी को नमस्ते नमस्ते आई मे यू गो सिंस यू अप्रिशिएटेड मी यस राइट इवैल्यूएशन फ्रॉम योर साइड बट आई गॉट ओवर इवैल्यूएटेड leading to strengthening of my ego so g my question is how to rightly evaluate oneself amidst genuine appreciations yeah <clears throat> see we should understand what this ego you know thing is okay mm. <clears throat> the reality is that each one of us is potentially divine so at the level of you are observer we are all potentially divine mm -hmm. that is what we have been saying right from the beginning right mm -hmm. so there is knowledge there is no ignorance at the level of pure observer mm. only thing is that we are not placing ourselves or centering ourselves at that you know pure observer mm. so we are <coughs> placing ourselves at lower activities of the self mm -hmm. and when we are placed at the lower activities of the self mm. then we do not have that potential of being divine mm. but that potential is already there that pure observer is an integral part of this self if only i raise myself to that place of pure observer right if i am operating at the level of pure observer you know and from there i am looking down into my lower activities and you know setting them in order then i can see that i am potentially divine at the level of pure observer and with that as the center i am able to set all my activities in this self in accordance with that divinity okay this is clear ji clear got clear ji yes this is what we have been saying you know right from the beginning all our exercise 1 and then exercise 2 is essentially trying to understand this and ensure this now what is happening is that whenever we are able to place ourselves at the level of pure observer and set the lower activities in accordance with it we are divine mm. and we are expressing this divinity in the world outside through our lower activities of the self mm -hmm. so this is there always potentially mm -hmm. now whenever we are able to see even the glimpses of it we feel very alienated okay mm -hmm. so we even that glimpses makes us so you know comfortable so happy mm -hmm. that we assume that there is continuity of it 
right? That is over evaluation. That mm -hmm. is leading to this ego. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fact is that I am potentially divine, but mm -hmm. the way it is or the way I am operating, I am not able to place myself at that level of pure observer in continuity. So I keep coming down to the lower activity and start operating from there. Mm. But still, you know, continue to assume that I'm, you know, that potentially divine and therefore I have become divine. That is the crisis. So this issue of over-evaluation is this confusion between what I am potentially and what I have realized out of it. Mm -hmm. Is it making sense? G, G, perfect, G, perfect. Yeah. So, but you know, if it is good that if I can see that I am potentially divine, then I can see the possibility. Mm -hmm. And I can start working for it. So that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing in exercise one and then, you know, expressing it in exercise two. Mm -hmm. So when somebody appreciates, you know, you or mm -hmm. me or mm -hmm. us, it is basically trying to appreciate that potential getting realized. Mm. Okay, which is a fact. Mm. But because of that, when I get confused and I think that there is a continuity of my being at that place, you know, of pure observers and operating from there, that is creating problem. Mm. That is creating ego. So what is the solution? The solution is that I must make effort to see this potential in myself and work out the process by which I can move from lower activities of the self to the highest activity of the self. That is state of pure observer that becomes my center of being. And I start operating from there. At the level of pure observer, I'm always divine. You know. mm -hmm. I'm able to see this, realize this coexistence, right? This mm -hmm. submergence. And under the light of that, I can see the harmony, the relationship and all that. So that divinity in me at the level of pure observer starts coming down to these lower activities of the self. Mm -hmm. And the, all the lower activities of the self is pervaded with this divinity. Mm -hmm. And when I express it in the world outside, I certainly express it, you know, express that divinity all around in my behavior, in my work, in my participation, in the larger order. So that is what we need to do. And that mm -hmm. is what we are trying to do through exercise one and exercise two. So my appreciation was that you are trying to work for it. Mm -hmm. and when you are working for it, you are getting the results. You are able to, you know, be at that level of, you know, uh, pure observer and operate from there more often, you know. And therefore, all your understanding and your contemplation and your imagination, you know, desire, thought and selections are getting, you know, improved, you know, more, getting more divine more oftenly. Mm -hmm. And therefore your behavior is becoming better, your work is becoming better and so on. 
and that appreciation was for this happening that is taking place through exercise one and exercise two, which you are working on. Mm -hmm. And it must become a motivation for you to work more on it rather yes. than inflating your ego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. There is motivation and inspiration, G, but at the same time, the ego is also sweltering. Both are there. <laughs> because we are not aware. Mm. When we lost, when we lose this awareness and it come down to lower activity of the self, you start getting into this problem of ego. Mm -hmm. This problem of over evaluation, under evaluation. From pure drashta, the pure observer, the sakshi, there is no problem of over evaluation, under evaluation. There is this seeing the reality as it is. So work on it. I mean, take it as a proposal, what I have said right now. Yes. And see for yourself whether it is making sense. Definitely, Ji. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Namaste, Bhaiya. Uh, namaste, Ganesh Bhaiya. Namaste. Yeah, I have this doubt. You just explained about divinity. So what is the meaning of divinity here that you are talking about? Can you please explain it? Yeah, in, in, in Hindi, it is called Dibeta. Dibeta means expanding to the whole existence. So what we were talking about Advaita yesterday, you know, that you are, you can see that you are an integral part of the whole existence and you are related to the whole existence. And when you are able to see this being relation and being related to everything in this existence, okay, you, you see that you are the existence or you are the representative of the existence. So you are not isolated. You are not unrelated. You are not in opposition. When you are in opposition, that is what is called a dvet. There is one between you and the other. When you see that there is no isolation, there is no opposition, I am an integral part of this existence and I'm related to each and every unit in this existence. And I'm related to this all pervading space in which every unit is embedded. In other terms, this realization of coexistence is what is divinity. That is what is being divine. So now I'm not in isolation. I'm not in a position. I'm in relationship to everyone, you know, every unit in this existence and this space, the all pervading space, which I am and everything is embedded. So this, to be able to see this relationship with all, to see oneself as an integral part of this whole existence, to see oneself as the representative of, representative of this whole existence, that is divinity. Okay. Because I was associating it with God. No, that is the meaning of God also. The meaning of God is the basic <laughs> primordial reality of coexistence, which is expressing itself right, in this whole nature. Mm. That is the meaning of, at least, if you look at the 
Indian tradition, the essential meaning of God is this. Yes, yes. Yeah, the literal meaning of the word Ishwar, Isha means the one which is expanded all over. Right. Yes, so the one yes. which has chosen to expand itself all over is called Ishwar. The another name is Brahma. Brahma is the one which expand, which is expanding or which is expanded, which is you know all pervading. And there are two types of Brahma. One is Par Brahma and one is Upper Brahma. This Par, -par Brahma is this space, all pervading space, right? And Upper Brahma is the all you know all over spread activity. the subtlest activity which is spread over, that is Upper Brahma. And these two together is called Brahma. And this is all spread over, and this is what is expressing itself in the form of these units in nature and the nature itself. So this primordial reality of space and this, you know, subtlest activity spread over in this space is what is called as Ishwar. Divya. Yes. And this whole idea, you know, this nirakar becoming the sakar, sakar. Sakar means what you can see now as some shape and size and things like that. Nirakar is that this is spread all over. So this upper Brahm is the activity, the per Brahm is no activity and the coexistence of the two is what is there as the base. And when this certain activities are combining together, they are making more and more gross activity. And at some level, you are able to see this, those gross activity. You know, and then you say that, okay, there is a form, there is a shape, size. So you become sakar in that sense. Yes. When you are not able to see it, right? That is nirakar for you. Ji, ji, ji. So that primordial reality, which is consisting of the all-pervading space and this least form of activity, which is activity which is spread over. That is the primordial reality. And that is spread over, therefore it is called Ishwar. Yes. Yes. So Jee. when you can see this, right, you also become divine. That is what I was saying, that you are able to see yes. that you are a representative of, a representative of this primordial reality. Expression of this primordial reality. Yeah. So once once I am achieve, able to see that reality, because I have just begun, I am not able to see the space and many other things. It's just the beginning. Yes. Uh, but once once I have seen that reality, then I can say Aham Brahmasmi. At this yes. moment, I cannot say. Yes. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Is that we are we are operating at the level of selecting and testing the lowest activity of the yes, yes yes and I am there, there only mostly, right now. Mostly, what we see is the shape, the size, the form. Yes. G G. 
you were saying something yeah completely yeah no i was saying that i am at that level only right now i am just a beginner i am just able to see myself in the b2 block only it's very rare that i am in b1 but yeah most yeah, of us working are on it there but good thing is that we are working on moving to the higher yes jeez jee bhi yeah uh, yeah uh, you know that uh, i am just a beginner i have just begun any specific suggestions you would like to give because uh, i am seeing the change but it is very slow i mean very slow yes it will be slow <laughs> okay <laughs> see uh, as we were saying you know that last 20 30 years we are trying to you know come up with those concrete suggestions which can help everyone you know uh, to uh, move to the higher levels of his being so all those suggestions we have compiled as what we are calling as ehb1 ehb2 ehb3 four like that and then this you know regular practice of exercise 1 and exercise 2 so they are all suggestions suggestions for your self exploration mm-hmm. they are proposals mm-hmm. and they have evolved you know we keep saying that there is nothing we are saying new there it is all there in the tradition it has been you know ex- investigated it has been realized it has been you know expressed shared with others other people have also worked on it and some results are there all that we are doing is we are trying to understand them practice them and then bring it in a form which can be made as a part of the main stream education mm-hmm. so that is what uhb team is doing yes. so all these suggestions are there in the form of uhb 1 2 3 4 mm-hmm. in the form of exercise 1 2 ji bhaiya thank you bhaiya you have been through this uh, last session you know isn't it on this session yes yes bhaiya this session only uh, this is my first time that i am doing uhv3 okay. i am associated with uhv since last april april 2022 uhv1 to and then volunteering in the faqs mostly and this is my first session of this uhv3 Very nice. It will take time. Yes, I that I can see here. Mm-hmm. It is very slow because many times I understand everything I know, but the awareness it is not there the entire day. It is on yes. and off, and the change is also very slow because when I ask my family members, "Do you see any change in me?" They say, "No, no change." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, i myself feel that okay i am changing but no one says that you are changing they say no there is no change except their, that i am their, their expectation is that divinity yeah <laughs> you are not up to it yeah definitely <laughs> but yes in myself i can see that uh, earlier i used to be angry very very quickly yes. but that anger is not there in me this is one thing that i can see in myself yes but others are not able to see any change they expect more and i said yeah. yeah that is why i, I am asking that how to uh, how to increase this huh? because the process is so slow that only i am able to see others are not able to see any change <laughs> yeah in fact it is not that you know they are not able to see any change they are able to see change appreciate it but their expectation is very high and they want to see you completely you not know, full divine nothing less yes ji so there is no visible change with respect to that expectation good morning everybody ganesh bhaiya myself dr prashant from nagpur i also been uh, joined or uh, related with this uhv morning session just only after last 4 months भैया अभी जो आपने बोला है राइट नाउ 
I was understanding the space means God, but you have given the another name that is the Brahmas. So uh, I got one Parabrahma. It's a space, but I am not getting another word. Please explain, brother. Upper, upper, upper means which is not per. Upper means it is not per. Yeah. Right, right. It is not English upper, per, no? U double P. Per means no. per means uh -huh. beyond activity. Upper means not beyond activity. Right, which, means, which is activity. So there are yeah. two types of reality. Ji. One is per Brahm, which is beyond activity. Second is activity, which is not beyond activity. Ji. Yeah. So per means beyond. Per means beyond. Per Brahm and upper Brahm. Upper yes. Brahma means whatever be the uh, sakar, what you have said, that is activity. Murti. Call it activity, not sakar. Achha, achha, achha. So, Call, because this activity may be not be visible to you. So, till then, it does not become sakar for you. Ji, ji, ji. When means you are able to see, then it becomes sakar for you. Ji, ji, ji. No, I was confusing with just like murti, sculpture, or mandir, whatever we are telling or assuming, it is not uh, upper Brahma, no? no? They are the kind of, you know, because you are able to see only the physical forms, yes, the yes. very gross forms, Ji. then these murtis are, you know, constructed for you Ji. to represent those subtler you know, possibilities of activity Ji. in no activity. Ji. So, in general, what I understood from this last discussion of 20 minutes around, uh, uh, God or divinity, so divinity means God or God means you have told the space, space and this means Parabrahma and Upper Brahma. So whatever we are assuming, somebody is observing us. It means that it is the um, it is the space or it is the nature. Nature also can be called as parabra upper Brahma. Nature. Nature is the expression of this coexistence of par Brahma and upper Brahma. Very nice. Both, both, both. Means that's why we are we can call uh, the both as a god. Nature, nature. Yeah. So par Brahma and upper Brahma put together. Ji. Is called God. God or ji. anything. I am saying calling it Ishwar because the literal meaning of Ishwar is the one which is expanding you know, or expanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just now you explain. So, yeah. uh, last question, Bhaiya, because uh, I used to uh, get to what that is called as. One question that is right now uh, discussed with Gita Didi. Uh, it means the right evolution. It means that whenever somebody is uh, observing or somebody is evaluating me, I never should take it as a right evolution. All the time I should take over evaluation? No, no, I'm saying take it as a right evaluation in this sense Ji. that you are able to see the potential in you. Exactly. And you are able to see that you are realizing some part of that potential. Ji. And that you have to work more for realizing the remaining part of your potential. That will be the right evaluation. Ji. But, okay. uh, ha, ha. Yes, yes, you, can, you, you may expand also. But just now you told that if my uh, happiness, if I want the continuous happiness with that expressions which we, I am getting from others, so always should I take it as over evolution or development of the ego? No. Yeah, this continuous happiness is my state of being. Ji. This is not coming from the other. Yes, sir, that is the natural acceptance. If, Ji, if Ji. I make it, you know, dependent on the other, I am in trouble. Ji, 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 Ji. Bilkul, bilkul, bilkul. So that continuous happiness is something which is my basic, you know, being. Ji. And which takes place when I am centered at the level of pure observer. Ji. And from there, I am able to look at my lower activities, evaluate them and set them in order. 
जी सो एनी इवेल्युएशन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड और एनी एप्रिसिएशन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड शुड हेल्प टू यू नो एक्सेलरेट दिस प्रोसेस जी यस दैट इज द आईडिया ऑफ एप्रिसिएशन इट मींस दैट भैया व्हाट आई हैव अंडरस्टूड फ्रॉम दिस होल डिस्कशन so you should you should be all the time in harmony by your own if yes. somebody under evaluates you somebody over evaluates you you should not be disturbed aapka bhav jo hai it should not be disturbed and you should continue with your divineness ji bhaiya that is the ultimate state but when you are in the process ji and somebody is appreciating ji you should take it as an indicator <coughs> that you are making progress in the process ji 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 therefore you have to work intensively in that process exactly exactly yes of course bhaiya whenever somebody appreciates you it is now your responsibility increases you should be more than that whatever is your state you must go towards the progress and that's why that appreciation is required and that's why in my life i am taking it as a right evaluation with the With the warning that you should not go towards the ego, may I write, brother? Yes, and it is not an open-ended progress. Ji 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 ji, absolutely. There bilkul. is a definite end. Reaching to that divinity is the end point. Ji ji ji. So it every is time that. I have something to compare. Ji. That I have to reach to that state of divinity. Till then, ji. till I have not reached to that place, I have to make effort. Right. and making that effort and moving up is what is progress ji 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 bhaiya so uh, you will be continuing for coming two three days again or no, is it the last I, day i think i will uh, for the time being complete today ji ji that's why i was knowing so i was and, raising the hand in last two days but i did not get the chance and i think some yeah. other time ji 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 i am also in this path I am doing yeah. for the Nagpur region some good things. I want to do. Okay, Ji Bhaiya, Namaste. Yeah, Namaste, sir. Ji, yeah, Namaste to all my questioners. Namaste, Ganesh Bhai. Namaste, Namaste. Ah, uh, my ah uh, my question is ah uh, uh, this uh, generally ah uh, we uh, this uh, type of food and food habits uh, uh, will influence on the uh, samskars uh, or uh, developing the samskars with. Uh, Uh, uh natural accessible samskars and all this uh, i would like to uh, know a uh, comment from you bhaiya regarding this aspect generally no, people no, are I, unable I, to can, can, you, the... can you uh, repeat your question again yeah it's very really difficult to come out from the food habits or type of food uh, what the yeah have been cultivated by people who uh, Cultivated the uh, food habits and type of food based on their possibility. Uh, so, the, what is the influence of this uh, type of food and food habits on changing the samskars or the old samskars and developing samskars which are uh, naturally acceptable? So, on that, uh, I'd like to have some more uh, from the other side. Okay, let me uh, formulate. Uh, Uh, your question and check whether i have understood it correctly or not uh, you are asking that our food habits you know how is it related yes. to our sanskar that we have right now and also how it relates to the formation of new sanskars is that what you are yes, asking yes yeah yeah exactly yes so your food habits or any habit for that matter is a product of your sanskar and your imagination based on those sanskar yes okay. so that is one thing so you have some set of sanskar and with those sanskar you are interacting with this world outside okay. so you have some set of imagination desire thought and selections 
and with that you are expressing it in terms of your behavior in terms of your work in terms of your participation yes so what you call as food habits or any habit for that matter is basically this you know you are sanskar plus your imagination plus your expression in the world outside is that clear yeah yes yes bhai so you are too much of you know uh, and and i can understand from your question that what you are trying to say is that you know many people are very overpowered you know by this food habits yes yes right yeah so the issue basically is that i have a sanskar which says that one of the basic source of happiness is the sensation that i get through my body and in that particularly the taste you know the sensation of taste is a source of happiness for me so if i have this sanskar when then most of the time my imagination goes on around this how to get tasty food how to make that tasty food how to earn enough money to buy those tasty food right so yes. basically that sanskar that my source of happiness is in the sensation and particularly the sensation of taste is engaging my imagination and then engaging my you know behavior my work and all that so this is one thing that sanskar is leading to this habit other yes. thing is that if i do this if i have this kind of food habit and if i am engaging into those kind of food habits then will it affect my sanskar yes the sanskar are affecting this activity that we are doing and this activity that we are doing are also affecting our sanskar for example if i am eating meat okay, because i feel that this meat is tasty and this sensation of eating meat will give me happiness right then while eating meat somewhere or the other i keep or start expect you know accepting that this meat which is which has to come from some animal can be killed and eaten whether i am killing it or not but it can be killed and it can be eaten so now my assumption about the other being about the animal for example would be very different from the one who is not eating meat so that is forming a sanskar you know so out of my sanskar for getting happiness you know through sensation and sensation of test i am now getting into this new sanskar that the animals can be killed and they can be eaten so this killing is not something very uh, you know uh, something which is to be avoided and if animal can be killed the animal bodies can be killed the extension of it may be that even human bodies can be killed what is the problem it is you know yes. simple as extension yes sir so this way your sanskar may be influenced it may be affected so both way this is possible your sanskar leading to your food habits and your food habits leading to new sanskars so i remember one um, incidents 
when uh, we went to Bhutan for this EHB course, one of the director of an institute, he was very fond of eating meat. So all three meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner, he will eat meat. And this person one day asked in the workshop, you know, this meat eating, you know, is it right, not right? So I said, I will not respond to this. I will only ask this question to you, which you can ask yourself. Is it naturally acceptable to me to take away the body of an animal by force? So I said, you ask this question to yourself, and that is what I can say at this moment in response to your question. And in three, four years time, without any further discussion, this man kept asking this question to himself. And at one point of time, he decided not to take meat and then not only that he decided it for himself, he thought that the hostel mess, you know, should not provide this meat as a regular meal. He also thought that if it is not providing the uh, meat, then people will have difficulty in taste. So let me try to work out, you know, tasty food, which are not based on meat. So he made a lot of effort, you know, trying to find out the dishes which can be tasty. And for that, he, you know, hired three cooks from India, kept them there for 15 days to, you know, try out this and then train their cooks. And all this he did for more than a year. And once it was in place, then he said, from our side, we are not serving meat. We are serving this tasty food. Okay. If you want to eat meat, you know, it is there in the canteen, you can eat. So all this, you know, can be uh, looked into, explored and decided. Yes. Does it answer your question? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, I feel not only uh, meat are non vegetarian, in the vegetarian food also, uh, there are some uh, items. Generally, for example, so many people used to avoid onions or such uh, some uh, spicy food or masala food. That also uh, will it influence? That also. Oh, yeah, I just so, I took one extreme example. Yeah, yeah. understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Namaste, sir. Uh, good morning, Ganesh, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, I heard you. You are the uh, today you are spending only one day. And uh, so I have uh, three, four questions. Uh, you may choose to answer one. Uh, and all of them are important to me. So I'm trying to ask you that. I'm going to work on them. And I'm very honest on that. So first, how to overcome Nadi Dosha is one thing. Nadi Dosha. How to overcome? Nadi Dosha. Hmm. And the second is, there are two aspects in seven chakras, Ida and Pingala. And if you are understanding these chakras or if you are overcoming yourself, because that is not every, anywhere, it is in you only. How to really work on that? Second. Third, in every human being, there is a male side and a female side. How to balance this out so that we could understand the opposite sex? And apart from that, as you mentioned in the morning, there is UHV 1, 2, 3, 4. And maybe I'm in, in a stage where I'm confused or only pointing at one area, not focusing the holistic way of 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe I have to redo the entire 1, 2, 3, 4 in a sequence. 
and if at all i get over to this objective of knowing what is being said in uhv 123 at least to start with what would be the change which i would be seeing in myself in reference to energy which is in me which is directed in the right way thank you sir yeah so i will leave question 1 and 2 to the experts okay i because need your opinion in that sir because i i can't no, find any I, expert than you who can you, answer everything you have given of... me a choice to answer one of the questions out of four so i will exercise at that choice so question 1 and 2 they call for certain level of expertise to talk on okay so i will leave that to those experts who are working on this nadi dosh or on chakras the third question i will respond okay <clears throat> the question is that if you look at a human being whether male or female there are certain tendencies hen him or her which are considered to be masculine or feminine right the question is how do you balance between the two have i understood correctly if fair enough if it is dominating you have to balance uh, obviously that is a question thank you sir yes okay so what are these two tendencies that we have to understand it is not talking about the male body or female body it is talking about the tendencies this is one thing which should be clear now what is those tendencies sir just before you answer is it not related to sanskar or is it a sanskar yeah it is a sanskar see sanskar means all that you have assumed as reality that is sanskar all your assumption all your acceptance of things as reality is sanskar so this is the very general definition of sanskar so your acceptance about reality and about the process of expression of the reality is all your sanskar so what is this feminine and masculine tendencies so there are two major things which we can see i mean it can be more details about it but in essence what we call as sankalp and samarpan sankalp means i can decide and i can do it samarpan is there is higher reality in which i am embedded and there are certain processes in this higher reality and therefore i as a part of this reality integral part of the the reality has to go through those processes and therefore i have to surrender to those processes if i decide anything otherwise it is not going to work so this masculine tendency is saying that i have to decide and work the feminine tendency is saying that i have to decide and work in accordance with this basic process basic laws you know basic rules of this existence of which i am an integral part so if i so understand this two tendency in this manner i can balance it so don't you see they are contradicting no 
no that is what we are saying all through what we are saying is that the existence is by way of coexistence harmony and relationship that is one thing and second thing we are saying that therefore we have to decide things on the basis of this basic you know rules of coexistence harmony and relationship so i have to take decision that is my masculine part of it the sankalp but i have to take this decision on the basis of coexistence harmony and relationship which is the basic rule of this existence so i have to surrender to this basic rule but given this basic rule i have to take the decision so this is the balance between the feminine and the masculine you know tendency and this should become my sanskar so there will be a balance sir you put everything in one simple way of saying it but the reality is very simple so if you understand it it becomes simple if you don't understand it becomes very high very no, both is, both are in 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 one self only no sir it's not that yes, i have true. to both of them are in one self the problem is that when you are not able to see this coexistence harmony and relationship right you don't do that naman what i was saying yesterday also that if you look at most of this indian you know traditions they start with naman naman means i have understood this fundamental rules of existence the process of existence and i bow down to it i surrender to it that samarpan is there with samarpan i have the sankalp sankalp that i will now take decision on the basis of this process, understanding of this process so this sankalp which is based on samarpan they are not contradicting for us if we understand both otherwise they are contradicting you think you can do anything and you decide to do anything and when you try to work out you are not able to do anything and you are in trouble sir on first day you have said you you have to involve or evoke or become aware of your self which is guru in itself so the guru is going to guide you which is natural acceptance obviously but then now you are bringing in two different aspects of male and feminine which is feminine is loss and male is decision or something of that sort but then in order to balance all these three things so guru is someone who is the self and he has his own attributes of looking at loss and also uh, being decisive maker so what takes precedence what is the priority or what is the order? <laughs> this is this is very clear this pure observer this guru is able to see this coexistence the lower activities are not able to see this coexistence so guru is the higher order uh, higher uh, b1 block yes b1 one. block and particularly that pure observer realization of coexistence now when this lower activities are working under the guidance of that guru that pure observer then there is a balance between samarpan and sankalp if these lower activities are not guided by this guru and they have taken to their own then they are in trouble so all your contradiction all your unhappiness is because of that that these lower activities have taken over this you know decision without consulting this pure observer but how can a student take over his guru sir matlab just for you see what is what, what is happening <laughs> i'm not trying to take over you sir i'm just trying to understand that pattern <laughs> which which no, is no, not... i'm not saying that i'm saying what is happening in you and us is essentially this the, the lower activities are taking over this pure observer because they are dominant <laughs> this what they have become dominant or they are dominant but then they are in trouble 
that is our whole contradiction sir just a point how to re get reminded of this if point if you read, read patanjali you know interesting in first four shloka he says all this gist the number one is anyway statement of the fact that now we are talking about the discipline of yoga in second he is saying yoga is chitta vritti nirodha second is third is saying that tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam and fourth is saying vritti sarupyam itrat so second third and fourth the meaning is that this vritti this lower activities of the self put together is called vritti there chitta vritti and they have taken over the drashta the pure observer when you give the higher priority to this then you are going according to the vritti this lower activity but when you go to the higher activity then you are established as a pure drashta as a pure observer otherwise you are busy with these lower activities that is the meaning of this three second third and fourth sutra so the suggestion is therefore that move to this higher activity of pure drashta don't get entangled only in these lower activities of the self wonderful sir you gave me a direction i hope i'll i'll reach up to that also thank you sir this is what we have been talking about right through <laughs> so no i'm not yes. denying anything of what you're saying it is just that i need to get it into context of my work where i'm looking forward to see where i'm heading also because it's it's all in the midst of dreams or just imaginations of trying to do something which is not even visible because b b2 is visible for a fact b1 is something which is not visible and as you said you have to reach to the expert to guide you in that first and two questions of the nadi dosha and uh, chakras which are not visible so somebody saying something is the, it has to be taken on the face value because maybe he is saying right until i know that what is right for me i can't even evaluate what i am trying to think about yeah so this has to be this have to be taken as proposal and we have to work on it yes got it sir. got it thank you thank you very much jagdeep ji thank you jagdeep ji yes uh,